A lot of people obviously watching the news know that anti-vax extremism has been ripe. A recently a protester was taken into custody after she allegedly threw a feminine hygiene product onto California's Senate floor. What looked like blood splashed on lawmakers' desks. But the truth is this, most people are not extreme like that. They're just confused. And I think we all empathize and understand that. Someone like Heather, who falls into that category, this new middle ground of people who are not anti-vaxxers, but are vaccine hesitant parents. She joins us now via Skype. Also joining us in the audience is infectious disease expert, Dr. Ravina Kular. Welcome. So good to have both of you. And Heather, can you explain a little bit about your own hesitation when it, when it comes to fully vaccinating your children? You know, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm someone who was hesitant at looking at the schedule and, and going, wow, like, first of all, what is that? And I'm not a parent who can blindly just like walk into a doctor's office and say, yes, please give my child three shots today. I just wanted to know what they were. I wanted to know what they were going to help with. I wanted to know how it was going to protect my child. And now there's this whole movement of people and unfortunately this whole anti-vax uh, you know, group or whatever you want to call it, people who do what you've just stated there um, on the Senate floor uh, have really ruined the conversation for asking about vaccines, for even asking questions about the schedule, for asking any kind of questions or concerns that you might have as a parent. There are vaccine reactions that happen. Um, it's stated there's studies on that. So whether it be a high fever, whether it be a seizure maybe or something more, it's a really sad thing that's happening. Um, in our society that you can't ask these questions because there's a couple of bad apples that have ruined the conversation. Are there particular things that you've heard about in vaccines that you're worried about? I, I would say uh, high amounts of aluminum and not necessarily in a single dose vaccine, but when you look at vaccines like the DTaP, so measles doesn't have aluminum in it, but when you look at the DTaP and then you look at the amount they have to have now, they actually just added another one to the schedule. So you'll have four DTaPs I believe it's by the time you go into kindergarten, you just wonder why, first of all, why was one added is the question. And then secondly, is it because the vaccine wasn't effective? And then why do they need, you know, that amount of aluminum? It's such a, they're such little bodies. They're still developing. There's still so much going on. And we're trying so hard to, you know, just do everything we can to protect these little bodies and have them developing. And there are so many sick kids. There are so many random autoimmune disorders going on and there's no connection. There's just, I wonder why the science isn't happening. Dr. Clark, you're, you've been listening to this. Uh, Dr. Ovid, I know you've been listening, but, but let's break down some of the concerns that Heather has that I'm sure a multitude of other viewers have as well when it comes to vaccines, because it is scary yeah. to say, here's my child, just go ahead and vaccinate them. I'm not worried about it. Of course, parents have concerns. Yes, vaccines do contain formaldehyde and aluminum, but in very small amounts. And let me tell you why they're necessary. Aluminum is needed because it's an adjuvant, meaning that it serves as a booster and it helps our immune system actually have a stronger effect to the vaccine. So thanks to adjuvants such as aluminum, we don't need to give so many doses of a vaccine. And the amount is so small, 0, 0.0 milligrams per dose. And floating around in our bodies, we already have 50 to 70 times more aluminum than that. And in our water, in our food, that all contains aluminum. So the, the, that am amount is so small that it does not have a negative effect. What about formaldehyde? Yeah. We think of formaldehyde in medicine as that is what's used to help preserve. Embalming fluid. As an embalming yeah. fluid in the cadaver lab, we all know that smell and, and honestly very unpleasant. I completely empathize when parents say, well, why is formaldehyde in So in formaldehyde is in a vaccine to inactivate or weaken the toxin. And again, it has such a small amount and uh, I can let you know that formaldehyde is part of our normal metabolism. So children have formaldehyde in their body. Same thing, about 50 to 70% times more than a single dose of vaccine. Both of those ingredients are vital for the vaccine to be beneficial in someone's body whenever they get vaccinated. 